Hello, this is a video about price earnings analysis, and it's actually my second try, and it's the first time I did something. I uh, posted this video, or a video like this already, and I got a thumbs down. Oh, it just crushed me. Oh, no, it did. It kind of does. Um, and hopefully the reason I got a thumbs down, well, who cares, really, but I listened to it, and there was all this thunder in the background, so... You know, I have my new headphones and my microphone that doesn't seem to work quite as much as I really want it to. So I'm trying to do it again. So this video is about P-E ratios. And maybe the, the negative reaction was to my opinions about how much crap the uh, uh, P-E ratio formula really is. Or maybe they don't like the interpolate stuff. But at any rate, if you want to follow this one, it's in, if you go have the Google Drive, it's in Chapter 7's in the, uh, Chapter 7 in the Price Earnings Analysis. If you go to the, ah, you don't care about that. If you go to the website, it's in this section down here on Advanced uh, Analysis with the Corporate Valuation Models that I'm trying to restructure and make just a little more um, organized. Okay, now here's the historic PE ratio. Hmm, I threw this in just getting it on Google. So we're going to explain what a kind of 20 times PE ratio really means in terms of cost of capital. I'm going to later do some scenario analysis, but here is what we're going to do first. The very first thing we'll evaluate uh, this formula for the PE ratios, and this is a formula where where you come up with 1 minus G divided by ROE. Well, that's for the here. PE is 1 minus G over ROE divided by K minus G. Let's flip the K minus G and the PE around, and you get the cost of capital. And then we're going to demonstrate this inflation adjustment. And I'm going to try to explain this in a reasonable way. If you learned this formula, either by reading the McKinsey book or by going to university, I'm maintaining that this formula is really wrong because part of the earnings of a company from an economic standpoint is the inflation in the assets that doesn't represent cash flow. And since that doesn't represent cash flow, you get a different P.E. ratio when you make an adjustment for in, uh, uh, inflation. We'll get into that a little more deeply. Then, of course, the not of course maybe, but the problem with these formulas is they all have a constant ROE and G. In fact, this one really can be horrible because the ROE and the P.E. ratio in the earnings is not the same as this ROE. You can say, well, this is the incremental ROE of some fancier word even, but it doesn't work. Um, it can be fixed for inflation. It can't be really fixed for incremental versus existing ROEs. Sorry, it just doesn't work. Uh, uh, the, the, so the what we're going to do in the third case is kind of make a changing ROE. Not kind of, but exactly do that. Show you again how to use this interpolate lookup function and show you how to make an adjustment for the terminal value. Then we'll show you kind of how this applies in, in the real world in a second video and then make a uh, scenario analysis. So just to review the formula, the basic formula is this one, Gordon's formula. Hoo-hoo! Gordon, this man who tried to increase your utility bills by increasing the cost of capital. Now, it's just a mathematical. The cash flow divided by K minus D is just mathematical. Now, I think you could compute dividends a bunch of different ways. Dividends could be, let me see, the opening balance of the book value times the growth rate and a whole bunch of other things. But one way to get growth is this sustain, sub, sustainable growth rate formula, which is useless because growth isn't determined by the P-E ratio. The other way is the right way. The payout ratio is determined by the growth, so you move it around. And then you just substitute uh, for D1, you substitute DPO times E1, and you get the 
of the formula for dividends, and then you just plug it into this formula. If you want to multiply the whole thing by the book value, you can do all of that stuff. And then you can just reverse this formula. You can take this one and just go backwards. Okay. Now, let's go to the next part. And the next part, <laughs> you know what I'm going to do is, is uh, shift space bar and shift alternate uh, right arrow so we can kind of see. So here's what we have. I, I've done this about five times. I'm sorry I'm a little repetitive, but this time I'm trying to be clearer about it. First thing I did was select this area and press shift control F3 to get the range names. Okay, and then you can kind of go backwards and press shift control F3 to get them again. You don't need the top row. Okay, and then if you want to see the range names, you just press control F3. I've said this a lot. Sorry about repeating myself just in case you haven't seen them. Now here's the problem when you apply, oops, and, and let's do this. So the real is one plus the ROE divided by inflation. You didn't really need that one, but so you can see all the formulas. Oops, this one I should have done. Oh no. This was one plus the growth rate, nominal growth rate. And over here, now let's replace this by one plus the inflation rate. So we're just deflating the ROE, the cost of capital, and the growth. Now, if you use the real numbers, and you pretend, let's pretend there are two countries, one zero inflation country, and one country with a 3% inflation. Okay, now if you have the inflation, the real company, the, the country with no inflation, you have this. And then you take exactly the same uh, uh, business, a shoe business. I just had to buy shoes as if you care about that. And you take that business and just translate it to a different currency. Now, what you should do is have exactly the same dividends. And you should be able to take those dividends and present value them at, at, at higher discount rate that includes the inflation. I'm having to look up almost to say this. And when you discount that back, you should get exactly the same price. And then you would take the price earnings and you should get the same one. Now, what we have to do is make an adjustment for the inflation to get exactly the same thing that theoretically you should get. And then here's the price to book that we I talked about in an earlier video. So the real model just, you know, you can see it just, we just, that's an easy one. We just take uh, uh, the book value. I started with an arbitrary book value, multiplied it by the real rate, and then put one minus the, you, you know, this is the dividend payout ratio. I guess I decided to be fancier than compute the dividend payout ratio, one minus G over ROE. And then you get the progression in the book value. You can also get the retention rate. This is the amount you need to grow by, by taking this times the growth, which is the same as the income minus the dividends. And you could get the dividends by taking the initial uh, balance times the ROE minus the retention. So you just could do that. I'm sure then you could create another formula. Now, then you get the NPV of all the dividends at the real rate. You can do this, you know. And you take the uh, 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 NPV divided by the prospective earnings, and you get the P-E ratio. Now, we'll do it in with our nominal numbers. And here, I, I put it in bold, what we have to make an adjustment for. Here's what happens. Think about a translation adjustment. Think about our two countries, one with inflation, one without inflation. And you can compute your accounting books either in the inflated currency or the non-inflated currency. So if you compute it in the inflated currency, uh, uh, but you sell the products in the other inflated or whatever, you're translating from one to the other, you have to make an adjustment for the assets. Okay, and the assets in the inflation have go up because the, you know, uh, whatever, the, the assets get inflated. So now we take the opening book value, and now our ROE, 
the the return on equity we earn from an economic standpoint is the is the ROE, but we have to take out the amount we earn from inflation. And then when we're computing the dividends, we can compute it, that in the same kind of way. But th this is the this is the problem. And then we have to de define what kind of earnings to take. Should we take this earnings? Include this in our PE ratio, really. Okay, now in order to make it all work, and then I did the same sort of thing. Well, no, this is where we just, uh, excuse me, take the dividends and divide it by the inflation factor to get the same factors, whatever. And then I, so here's the disc, here's the real uh, nominal discount rate. Here's the NPV of the dividends. That's exactly the same. Or we could take the first year's dividends divided by K minus G because we have no, nothing uh, uh, changing. Or we could take the book value times G minus ROE divided by K minus G. That's just the same formula. It's basically getting the dividends. Now, here's the problem. The earnings here, you know, this earnings, when we looked at the real earnings, it was this one. I'm going to press shift control seven. That was the real earnings. Then when we do it adjustment, you know, should we take 13 earnings, which gives you a much lower PE ratio, or should you take this 10 earnings that doesn't include the inflation? And that's what you kind of have to do is to take the, the, the excuse me, this, this earnings and adjust it by uh, the inflation and then you get the same number I'm not gonna I didn't explain that very well I know I shouldn't laugh at myself for being an idiot but oh no you're gonna give me a thumbs down please don't uh, and then uh, uh, we we have the reconciliation okay now that's that but this video really was okay let's how to let's now derive this this cost of capital real or nominal from the formulas now that's not hard to to do right here as usual we can just take the k minus g move it back the, the pe move it the other way and you get the plus g at the end and you get this formula for cost of capital now what i'm trying to do in this next now you may have noticed a little break in the analysis i apologize for that but, um once we've kind of established the the formula for computing the, the cost of capital from a single ROE and a single growth rate. The issue really in practice is what do we do about changing growth rates and changing ROEs? And that's what addressed is in the, is in, uh, addressed in the next page. However, before we do this, I'm going back to another file. Now this is a file. This is again, the cost of capital database a lot of work this one has some of the Dow uh, 30 uh, companies I didn't put them all in so this is uh, here's the ticker symbol and you enter the ticker symbol you click on the one that says clear sheets and you read everything it goes through it takes a little while 20 minutes maybe and then it reads the data for each company so it's got a whole lot of sheets suppose you know what i could do here is i'm going to um, open this file this uh, generic macros file that i keep talking to you about too much and there's a little table of contents uh, macro in that file which is one of the easiest macros you could ever make because it just is a little loop around the, uh, it's a loop around the sheet names so how about we press shift control space oops <laughs> I can't do that from here okay let's just press control minus let's get rid of this and then we press now I didn't make this because I thought it was kind of too easy. Oh, I put it in the no, I didn't put it in here even. So I, I just left it as part of the macros. So you have to kind of go to the generic macros if you want to do this. I know you won't care. And then you go to the one that is called uh, 
create table of uh, contents and it's it's a big one so you press the a long one and presses OK and it's got some a little bit of decent things it puts a little whatever hyperlink there for you and then so once you've read this it gives you for look at all these files that's why I did it so if we want to go to IBM's uh, income statement we can go here now this is all, it all looks like a complete mess and it's supposed to and the rest of the macros and functions take this mess and put it back together and what you do I've talked about this in other things so I don't want to be too repetitive but here's for the Dow 30 so it's a new one we can look at the price to book more importantly we can look at the earnings per share progression I didn't have to uh, recalculate that we can look at the PE ratios that's what we're really, we're really talking about see that the PE ratios the current for this group is about 18 for the PE ratio so that might be what I'll use okay we can do it based on an average ending stock price we should look at really a forward PE okay I don't think I had to recalculate that that's the same thing and then we can also look at what happened to the stock prices over time and the book value per share which for some of these companies went crazy they must have had some kind of big write-off or there was I checked the, the the numbers a lot and then we can look at the price to book ratio and the return on equity a lot of the stuff that we've been talking about that you could uh, change the format when the book value went down the ROE went way up for this you can do the same thing for the EV to EBITDA analysis pick the tax rate what about if we want the EV to EBITDA ratio you know I, I um, this is this big question do the which is more stable uh, I can't seem to operate this this thing okay and here okay Apple's EV to EBITDA ratio is eight times and you get varying amounts over time and over space and I you know you should understand that the EV to EBITDA uh, uh, depends on replacing capex tax rates blah 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 it's very kind of difficult to uh, to consider now this in this case this is what I'm really showing here's the PE ratio now over here uh, uh, you can download the five-year projected growth rates what a lot of crap well maybe 19 percent they're going to go up because they're at such a low level I guess that's what people are thinking about Exxon Mobil Chevron 29 percent Disney 10.7 percent uh, 13 percent I think that's high so you can cap the growth rates here and if you ca you can also then exclude some funny looking companies I don't know if that was worth it but some of these ones that have extremely high ROEs I excluded uh, when they they, have, they seem to have enormous write-offs I don't know for tax purposes or what then we have the the PE ratios now when you do this you know if you assume that the short term lasts forever put 50 years I uh, never tried this it's probably going to break the whole thing then we get a cost of capital here of 11.5 percent that's driven by the high growth rates but if we assume instead five years and after the five-year period that the growth rate becomes stable and the ROE isn't that much more five percent I think is a lot more than uh, the the cost of capital you can go around and back in and use this wonderful function to figure out what the the cost of capital and then you get a dramatically different result and I'm not saying well I think this one's closer but you don't have to agree with me and if you change this to uh, seven percent and do the calculation you get it didn't it wasn't a dramatic effect I, I and let's change the this to four percent and again make our calculation and then we can see what happens to the, the, the ROE when we change all this so I'm changing this back 
and to kind of a standard terminal growth rate. The problem is, of course, you know, those are very speculative. And then this one does the same thing for the EV to EBIT. And then this is kind of interesting. We did the ROE regression. Even though they're all in different industries across everything else, we get kind of a 5% uh, uh, total return, not risk premium. You'd have to take the Treasury bill thing and then what, what's the Treasury bill rate we have? We have that as the treasury bill right now it says is 2.51 so you take that 2.51 against the out of the uh, 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 the total uh, number I'm digressing a little bit sorry about that you got a risk premium for the cap M of about three percent all right so that's the some difficulties and some issues with the cost of capital. Now, what I'm going to do is save this file. I'm going to put this one on the website. So I keep changing this uh, kind of database. And I'm going to uh, stop the video, and then we're going to talk about just how you adjust the uh, growth rates, how, how you change the, uh, change the growth rates. All right, so another fin video finished.